This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or domain, visit squarespace.com. Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video. Have you ever had a situation where something really cool happened right in front of you, but for some reason you didn't manage to capture it? The one that got away? In this video, I'll teach you my five top tricks to improve the odds that you don't miss the next golden photographic opportunity that happens unexpectedly right in front of you. If you stay for my bonus tip, I'll share the tip that allowed me to capture these shots. My name is Simon Dantremont, and I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Try to open up your sometimes. You'll be just Let's face it, we've all missed a great, unique shot opportunity before. Some say getting an amazing shot is luck. I say it's laboring under correct knowledge. Let's start with knowledge tip number one. My first tip is to always have your walk around settings on your camera. That means regardless of what you were photographing last, before you leave taking that last photo and start walking around, set the camera settings you need at the ready for something quick and unexpected to happen. Maybe your last shot was of a street scene at a low shutter speed and small aperture as nothing was moving and you wanted everything in focus. Or a wildlife subject that was just sitting there. But is that the best setup for some unexpected action? Maybe you want more shutter speed and a thinner depth of field for a surprise opportunity. Remember, if you set your camera up for quick surprise, you can always reset it to a slower shutter speed if you find a new photo opportunity that doesn't need it. But you can't do it the other way around. Have settings for static targets and instantly get ready for some action. When I walk around duck ponds using my Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens and my Canon R5, my favorite walk around settings are a 1 2,000th of a second shutter speed, f7.1 aperture for a little extra sharpness compared to wide open, and auto ISO, with one third of a stop exposure compensation subtracted to preserve any bright highlights. Your walk around settings will depend on what your favorite genre is and the lighting conditions. My next step is to set up an emergency button on your camera. Now, not all cameras can do this, but on many cameras, you can program a button to recall any setting you put in there. For me as a wildlife photographer, that would be settings for unexpected wildlife to jump out of the bushes or fly by. On a Canon camera, for example, go to customize buttons and see if you can find register recall shooting function. When you hit info, you can set any setting you want. For me, I set one 2,000th of a second shutter speed, nine focus points, my lens at maximum aperture and auto ISO. Those are the settings I want when something great happens like this one where I saw this duck dunking its head underwater. I just pointed my camera, hit the emergency button, and hit the shutter. No messing around with settings. I would have missed the shot otherwise. Here's a few more emergency button to the rescue shots. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I use Squarespace to make my very own website and it was really easy. They have lots of templates to choose from or you can customize pages with easy drag and drop sections for photos, clickable buttons, text or links. When I recently added a wildlife photography course to my offerings, it was really easy to add a new page to my website and add some photos and some text boxes anywhere I wanted them. You can even get people to subscribe to your newsletter and offer them a free download in return if you wish. A great way to build engagement with your clients. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My next step is to always look behind you when you're scoping out a scene. We sometimes get stuck focusing so closely on one opportunity that we miss the great photo sitting there right behind us, waiting to be discovered. This happens often for newer photographers that are trained to put the sun behind them and shoot into their shadow. As such, they're subliminally trained to avoid looking into the sun. And that's a shame as that can create some of the most amazing photos. In this situation, I was taking photos of sandpipers with a beautiful low sun behind me and having a great time getting photos and video footage. Then I turned around for a second and saw there was another bird that had landed just five meters behind me with the sun making beautiful highlights in the splashing waves. So I spun around and took this shot. The best photo was behind me. Or this shot where I was so focused on this fox in the shade that I failed to notice these fox skits behind me playing around in the beautiful backlight. By the way, if you sign up for my email list, I'll send you a free guide on shooting in backlit situations. Link in the comments below. My next tip sounds so no brainer, but we've all done this, each and every one of us. Full memory cards and empty batteries. 
If this has never happened to you, let us know in the comments below as you deserve the recognition. You get to an amazing location with tons of action, like me having a field day with a hundred bohemian wax wings. Next thing you know, you've taken two or 3,000 photos and your batteries are empty and your memory cards are full. Guilty. So how do we fix this? One, make a habit that every time you come back from an outing, put the battery in the charger and download your photos. If you put the charger near the door, it will make it easy and give you a reminder. That's what I do. The charger is here, the door to the garage is here. Second, have a spare memory card and battery in your camera bag, or as a matter of habit, put them in your pocket when you go out shooting. That's what I do. Into the pocket goes a memory card and a battery. My next tip is one that goes against the grain of what some others say, which is to chimp. That is to look at the photos at the back of your camera. I've heard people say, real photographers don't chimp. What a bunch of bull. If you've climbed up a mountain to take a 21 shot stitched panorama of the view, you'd better double check that they're in focus and well aligned before you start your trek back down the mountain. I learned that lesson shooting a big panorama of the Milky Way over a tree. I drove to the location, found the right composition, leveled the camera and set up the shot. Then I took 14 photos, seven of the land and seven of the sky and went back home. When I got home, I noticed that the seven sky shots were out of focus. I had bumped the focus wheel when rearranging the camera for the sky shots. As such, the next night I had to go and do it all over again. And it's not just complicated shots like panoramas. Take a few extra shots of anything you're shooting. Culling out a few extra shots is easy. Take a few insurance shots of whatever you photograph. You can use them later to inspect them for critical sharpness, find one without a random person walking in the background, or bracket exposures by taking three shots of varying exposures if you're unsure which exposure is best. Remember, they're free. And maybe the easiest to implement tip to make sure you get that shot is the backup plan of using custom settings profiles. Remember when I told you to always have the walk around settings ready to go? Well, let's say you forgot and something great happens right in front of you. What's the next best thing? to have your emergency settings set up as a saved custom button. Many cameras these days allow you to save a setting profile on an easy to access button like the C1, C2 and C3 settings on my Canon camera. You can have C1 be your static target settings handheld, C2 to be your tripod settings and C3 to be your action setup. That way, if something quick happens, you just need to quickly move your dial to C3 and start shooting. That's what happened with this photo. I was driving along a dirt road, heading to a location to photograph eagles, when off to my left, I saw a short ear dial coming right at me. I stopped the vehicle, lowered my window, and simply put my camera on C3, my action settings. I shot this photo, and even this photo, as the owl flew right over the hood of my car, one of my coolest experiences ever. Without my stored action settings, I wouldn't have got the shot. If the topic of great camera settings that you can set up on any new camera has you intrigued, check out my video on that topic, which you can check out right here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and YouTube will share with other photographers struggling with missing shots. And I hope you can go out your very next outing and come home with images you might have missed in the past. I know you can do it.